Making attacks in Dreams PS4. What is up? If you like this tutorial, you might like my combos tutorial and my how to make fighting games tutorial. You can check those out up here as they pop up. Those are mine and they will teach you how to do that stuff for your game. Before we even look at this game that I'm creating called Super Dreams Fighter or Dreams Fighter, I haven't decided. I want to say making effects for your attacks like particles stuff like that using the emitter while you're attacking can actually make your attack more flashy thus making your character more memorable all of these things are, are, are important essentially because if your character is boring no one's going to want to play with it and nobody wants to know about a boring character mario is not boring luigi definitely is not boring he even has his own games so i want you guys to remember that and i want you guys to remember that using basic body limbs like trying to create punches trying to animate punches stuff like that usually it's just the punches that are the hardest thing to animate because when you're animating them it's kind of hard to get the arm to swing forward instead of bend forward if that makes sense or bend up it'll bend upward that is the hardest thing to animate but it's it's not too hard it's just trial and error to do the punches i will show you how to animate that as soon as i show you my game don't forget to follow me on dreams i'm young Tech's youtube i have a couple probably three or four games completed right now so here's my information on how to make fighting animations. So here's the character. Somebody else made this basic swing animation, but I made the puppets swing animations. I did all that. And as you notice, whenever I get hit, there's hit indicators. And there's even that attack indicator, that circle-y thing, which makes the attacks more memorable. The person that created this thing, um. Whenever you swing, you have particles, and it's actually, I think, the particles that he's using is what that is right there, which I created that attack right there. It's, it's, it's really matrixy. It's, it's really cool. You can also use uh, the emitter to do like flare attacks like that, and uh, pretty much um, it's really simple. Using the emitter to have damage indicators, even whenever it's swung, like there's a line that if you notice the puppet has that line strike whenever you hit him that right there can make everything that means everything to making the fighting animations successful so before we even get into animating i wanted you guys to know about the particle effects using the emitter it's as simple as that and then putting in the emitter settings let's go ahead and jump in i'll show you my emitter settings for um how I got a lot of that stuff. It should this should be it right here. Uh, emit object lifetime. You can shorten that if you want to make it more disappear more instantaneous. Um, how many can be emitted at once? The main thing is to put this on, and then have this like this, and then have this on, and then have this at zero. Then you can mess around with this as you please. Then you just select a particle. So I just type in effects up here and I'm using the effects from Media Molecule. Somebody else may make effects that you wanna use also. I'm just using that and it's one of these, probably Sparks is the one that I'm using to um, get all that done. You can emit with wires. So like if you wanna attach trigger zones to, to things, like if you wanted to click something and then uh, click your trigger zone and then group it together. If you do that and have that on, that should have it to where the trigger zone is successfully there to where it'll look something like this right here. And then um, the detected settings, here's what a trigger zone is, can be put into, um, into uh, lowering your enemy's health. And the sparks effect is this right here. And it's also the sword swing. So that's why I showed you guys that. Let's go ahead and get into animating. Now again, doing slashes, stuff like that is a whole lot easier than, let's say making a boxer's punches and stuff like that, which isn't hard. It really depends on what kind of puppet you are using. 
So I'm not going to save this because uh, I don't need to. Follow me on Dreams. I'm Young Tech's YouTube on Dreams. And subscribe. Check out my channel playlist for individual tutorials on logic, sculpting, animation, music, and more. Right now in my fighting game, I have about 14 characters. I'm going to go ahead and click on the first character that I created in my fighting game, which is a boxer. And we will start to look at how I animated the punches and kicks. If you notice, If you notice, I actually have the emitter for fire to make the punches and kicks more prominent. He even puts out a fireball. You can do a lot of cool stuff like that. If you want to make it to where the punches and kicks move differently, you can mess around with these settings right here by pressing L1 and square, or you might have to press L1 and X a few times and then press L1 and square to get to the basic puppet options right here. This right here will change the way the arms move, uh, the way it moves, your character, all that stuff. Usually I turn off motion sensor and usually, <clears throat> usually I will turn off auto look. During the punch and kick animations, you might want to turn off these two so that way the punches and kicks uh, complete. You'll want to turn these off with keyframes, with keyframes in your animation timeline. You want to make that keyframe bigger than while the keyframe is recording. Press one of these or press both of them and um, you should be good. You want to make it to where your puppet can't move while the while while the kick is happening. If you press these, though, so now that we know about the puppet's options, let's go ahead and go into how to animate all of this. What we're gonna press on is game, and then I'm just gonna pull out somebody else's puppet or not puppet, somebody else's character. We'll find one. It's just right around the corner. <laughs> not that one. This one, yeah. This is actually a character in my game. I actually really enjoyed animating this one. So if you wanted to make an animation for your character, what you would want to do is go to timeline right there, press L1 and X on it, and press L1 and square right here to change the animation speed. Sometimes you want to set this to once. If you, unless you want it to be like a charge hold attack, you'll want this on. So just set this to once, just set this to once. Now this is not how to program this. Again, check out my fighting game tutorial and my combos tutorial if you wanna learn all of that. If you wanted to transition from this standing state into the punch, then you'll want to put down a blank keyframe and set that keyframe to linear, and then you'll wanna animate. You'll, you won't wanna do anything with the first keyframe. You'll just do that. Press L1 and square on it, set it to linear, and you're pretty much done. Then you'll want to clone. The closer they are together, the faster the animation happens. So for quicker attacks, you'll want them closer together. Then you want to press L1 and X on your thing until you see the purple marquee thing down here. Then you want to start animating your punches. Eventually, a line will occur that'll show you how smooth you're making your animations. That'll be when you onion skin your animations. So to do that, what you would do is just clone from the previous one. That way your next one has the same animations as the last animation state. That way you're animating from the same thing, if that makes sense, or from the last uh, frame. And as you can see, there's a line there showing us how smooth our thing is, or we're making our animations. 
So, um, you don't want to move your animations like this too much because sometimes your uh, keyframe can catch that and it'll go inside of the animation. You want to do it swiftly. You want to make your moves swiftly with R, with L, with R2. And then you want to um, sometimes use the motion controls with um, L2 and use the motion controls. Sometimes you'll want to press R2 to, uh, to you know, make your movements. To make your thing smaller, just do that. And then you can do this as much as you want. And then at the end, after you've made your animations, if you wanted to transition out, just make that first one, your last one, the one that's blank. And again, um, to fix a lot of the animation errors, what you would want to do is put a keyframe down here, press L1 and square on your puppet while you're not scoped in like I was just now. You might want to press L1 and X a few times to where you get to this. And then what you want to do is this. Sometimes you want to keep one of these on. I think it's usually this one that I turn off, but sometimes you have to turn off both of them. It really just depends. And usually I always turn off auto look and the motion control thing. What this does is makes it to where the walk animation doesn't interfere with uh, the punch animation. So it looks pretty cool. It looks pretty cool. There's some things that we could do to it. Um, but for the most part, that definitely works. That definitely works. If we want to speed it up, that's not speeding it up right there. We'll do this. And for a robot type character, those kind of stiff movements are, excess, uh, are acceptable. There's also a neat trick you can do is something like this, put a keyframe down here and sort of uh, press L1 and X on it until you get to the uh, thing and started and sort of like do your animations, uh, you know, from another keyframe. Trying to get this one right here. There we go. I'm not sure what this is going to do, but hopefully looks like it's going to be cool. And it'll kind of combine this uh, keyframe with the other ones up there. Yeah, it's actually kind of cool. Let's see here. We'll mess with the envelopes. These dots are envelopes. They fade in and out. Moving a little bit too fast. I like it. We're going to upsize the middle one right here, which is this right here. I'm going to change it just a tiny bit. Move the position of the head. And that's going to make it to where that animation that I just added, edited uh, lingers a little bit. I'm going to delete this one. Speed it up. Upsize that. There we go. And then what you want to do is use the emitter effects and just, uh, you know, pretty much apply everything that I showed here. So it's actually really simple to do the attack animations. Again, it's harder to do punches than it would be to do like a sword and stuff like that. So keep that in mind.
Kicks are pretty easy, but I'd say punches might be uh, might be up there with the hardest thing. One of the one of the hardest things to uh, get the animations done fluently to where they're acceptable. And if I had more time with it, let's go ahead and show you guys my fighting game where that character is a character. Here we go. I think somebody else actually made those punch animations. I, no, no, wait, did I? Yeah, I made those. I, made those. I think I did. I might have. Like, I'm, I'm trying to remember. I know I did that. Yeah, I think I did. I think I did do those. Because I, I remember I had to re... Uh, to... Uh, to reprogram it. Somebody else had their punch animations in there already, so it's kind of hard for me to remember if I did or not, but I think I did. So yeah, just um, practice, get fluent with it, and make swift movements. Don't just like, you know, squiggle it around. Make swift movements, and then um, for a lot of attacks, you want to add like particle effects and stuff to make it look cooler, stuff like that. Here's an example of particle effects. If I can get him, there we go. Pretty dang cool, right? All right, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope this got, helps you out with attacks, animations like that, and so on. Don't forget to subscribe, follow me on Dreams, and peace out, guys.